Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chung, and um, uh, I'm, I'm the co-founder of LandCB and co-creator of the Lands Data format. Um, it was, it's been a lifetime since I worked on, on Pandas. Um, gl really glad to see Pandas 2.0, Arrow, and also uh, Polars becoming uh, really popular. It's wonderful to see the Python data community still growing and, and uh, taking on new things. Um, since, since that time, I've been focused a lot on like ML ops and experimentation. Um, and that's sort of uh, what led me to uh, this, uh, which is vector search and also unstructured data columnar formats. Uh, so if you like to talk shop, uh, you can find me on Twitter or GitHub using the same handle, uh, which is also my AIM screen name from like the last entry. So I think the core um, pain point that, that I've seen um, in this space for generative AI is that we're missing a storage layer. And what I mean by that is if you kind of break the ecosystem down into uh, analogies to uh, kind of like computer components, right? So the, the models themselves are like the CPU where the heavy processing gets done. The different frameworks from LangChain to, to Marvin is like the motherboard, right? So you, everything kind of plugs into it. You, it provides a interface for everything and keeps everything together. But when it comes to the storage layer uh, for vectors and for the raw data, especially multimodal, uh, I would I would argue that there's no um, great solution. So how is this really possible, you ask, right? Uh, if you're paying attention to sort of the generative AI space, you see lots of different options. It seems like every, we, every week a new vector database uh, is released, and every other week uh, a new like, traditional database has added some sort of uh, vector index to their offering. Um, so it's not that we're missing options to do vector search and for generative and store data for generative AI, but we're missing the right tools, right? Because a, a new era of technology um, will have different use cases, and will have different access patterns, and will demand different data infrastructure. So if you kind of look at the space, it divides into two. You've got pure play vector databases on the one uh, on one hand. So these are like your pine cones, your weaviates. Uh, your quadrants, chromas, and on the other hand, you've got traditional databases like Postgres, uh, MongoDB, uh, Elasticsearch, all that, that are, that are adding on vector index. Right? So in the former category, what, what's lacking here is that they tend to only deal effectively with vectors, and they only deal effectively with vector search. And uh, for traditional databases, that just slap on a vector index, they tend not to scale well because the, the vector index isn't really architected in the same way that the, the, the underlying database is. Uh, can't really deliver the same latency versus recall characteristics. And in general, vector search is much more CPU intensive than traditional OLTP workloads. Um, a sort of analogous example was when I was at Tubi TV, the real-time ads engine uh, relied on a MySQL instance that that stored all of the user metadata, right? And the data science team wanted to analyze that for um, ads optimization and retention and things like that. And so, um, you know, uh, w when I wasn't looking, uh, the, they sort of asked that team to open up a port so that they can send a query to it. And then they promptly sent a massive analytical query to that database and brought it down, right? So the 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 downtime wasn't long, but it was a meaningful amount of dollars lost for the company. And so I think you'll see sort of similar issues as folks try to take, let's say, like PG Vector or something like that into, into production, is that um, you know, capacity planning and things like that go out the window when you add these much more CPU-intensive workloads. Right? And then uh, for both of these options, none, nothing really deals with multimodal data very well. So if you've got images alongside with text and audio and 3D point clouds, uh, there's, there's really no good solution to, for, for storage and retrieval of that. And on top of that, for generative AI, uh, data versioning, schema evolution, all that, and reproducibility becomes very important. And for both of those categories, it's really difficult to actually, uh, it's actually really difficult to sort of uh, roll, do rollbacks uh, without blowing up away your storage budget and um, 
uh, and to sort of trace trace your results, right? So um, all of these characteristics will cause a lots of pain points for uh, the end user, which is like the, the new sort of category of AI engineers, right? So number one is that experimentation is too expensive. Uh, from from data set to data set, from use case to use case, series pr practitioners that are trying to build production quality apps find that the optimal retrieval method will differ, right? So some might need vector search, others might need keyword search, and yet others might need a combination of these two. Um, and with vector databases, user often have to sort of switch data infrastructure just to test a new idea, which is the opposite of what, we want, what you want, right? If you're a data scientist, if you're an AI engineer, you have this brilliant idea, you don't really even know if it's gonna work, but if you have to then uh, do all of the data engin engineering work to move data from one database to another, uh, then that becomes uh, really slow for iteration. Number two is that there's no single source of truth. Right, so um, as I mentioned, vector databases doesn't deal well effectively with the raw data and really with metadata as well. So in production, what I've seen, and especially for uh, large scale use cases, is that users often have to maintain multiple data stores and, and engines. So there might be like one vector store plus one um, like full text search index plus a raw data store. And, and you know, you have to, sort of hope to God that your data pipeline updates all of those things at the same time so that you can uh, actually have a single request threaded through all three of these things successfully. Um, almost all of the uh, vector indexing techniques today hold everything in memory. Um, and this is incredibly expensive and it's really hard to, to scale. So uh, if we do some back of the envelope calculations, like if you have a billion uh, embeddings from A to two, this is roughly six terabytes of space uh, using stored as floating point uh, flow 32s, right? These are 1536 dimension vectors. Now, obviously, RAM at this scale is 100 times more expensive than an SSD, right? It's, uh, you, you, you encounter like six terabyte or eight terabyte or 10 terabyte SSDs or multiple volumes very easily. Uh, it's hard to imagine a, a single node containing that much RAM. Uh, and sort of in a related, uh, a related note is uh, most of the vector databases today don't uh, sort of forgotten what we've done in data warehousing over the past two decades, which is the separation of compute and storage. So um, if you kind of go to these, you know, vector database websites and you price out the offering, right, a, a billion vectors can cost like 50K a month uh, USD, right? This is... Uh, a lot of times this is like, even if you're not sending a single query, it's just to store the vectors, right? If we can separate those two, right? If you, if you do some pricing calculations on S3, storing this costs $138 uh, per month. Uh, if you need faster e SSD storage, this is about $270 per month. And for compute, you can store, you can throw in uh, a, a pretty beefy node here for about $300 a month. So, at the same time, it seems like we've failed to serve the new use cases in generative AI well, and we've also forgotten a lot of the lessons learned from data warehousing over the past two decades. And so this is sort of the pain points that we're trying to solve with uh, LandCB, which is a new open source, serverless, and we call developer-friendly vector database. Uh, our users choose LandCB for sort of four reasons. One is zero ops. There's no servers to deploy. Uh, there, it runs in process like SQLite or DuckDB. Uh, you just pip install LandCB and you're good to go. You can store vectors alongside uh, with your documents, metadata, and more. So overall, this gives you better end-to-end -end performance and just your code is a lot simpler. Uh, the, the types of queries you can run against your data is also much more flexible in LandCB. So in addition to vector search, we'll, we support keyword search. We also support running just uh, simple SQL for really high qu high quality and context learning. Uh, and the last part is not just scalability, but also cost of cost effective scalability. Uh, as as far as I know, we're the only vector database that can support real time vector search on billion scale at with just a single node, uh, which some of our users have in production already. Now, all of this is enabled by uh, Lance Columnar format. 
Um, but before I dive into the details a little bit, uh, I just wanted to sort of sh make this a little bit more real and show you exactly uh, what I mean. So for this uh, demo, I am going to build a multimodal search app right over um, uh, the Diffusion DB data set from Hugging Face. So this is a generative AI multimodal data set. So you've got images in one column, you've got a prompt, uh, and then you've got a bunch of these metadata columns uh, throughout the data set. So right away, th these are, this is not something that um, other vector databases can effectively deal with. But you'll see in Lance, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, so what I've made is, we, uh, we can walk backwards. So what I've made is a little bit of a, a, a small Gradio app that uses Lance CB and OpenAI embeddings to, or not, not OpenAI, um, Clip embeddings to search over uh, the images and also the prompt. So for example, let's say if I type like portraits of, or sorry, misspelled, portraits of a person, something like that. Um, what happens is I would call Clip to embed the query that I added and then I use LandCB to say search over that for that embedding uh, over the image column, give me the top nine results, turn it into a pandas data frame, and you can see that these are searching over the uh, the images on themselves as classified by by the clip model. Um, now, if you remember the the prompt column here is strings, so I can actually search over the text as well. So something like I don't know Ninja Turtle. Um, and so, you, as you can see here, this is searching directly using the text. And so all the prompts will include some form of Ninja Turtle. So this one is portrait of Jennifer Lawrence as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Uh, I, I, I swear this was not made by me. Uh, and then, of course, we can also sort of search by playing SQL. Let's see how I'm doing on time here. Okay. Uh, right, and so um, I can just throw in a SQL statement here and, uh oh, <laughs> let's see what I did here. Oh, there's an error, uh, maybe there's an error message here. Interesting. What's that? No, I don't think so. But maybe. You can try it out. Whoops. Is it? Nope. Um, hmm. Wait, let me just try to debug this. I think this works. Okay, let me just try without without any of the conditions. <coughs> okay, so there's some something wrong with the where clause, but uh, as as you can sort of see, what we're what we're adding is um, basically the ability for you to just run plain SQL uh, on this data, and so in in production, I think. When you look at all the demos out there, it's very easy to just use vector search and not really care too much about it and get to like a sort of a compelling demo, right? And you, you get to sort of like this like 75, 80% quality like re of retrieval. But to get into production, uh, that's not enough. So oftentimes what folks, people are doing is you have multiple recallers that uh, retrieve different results out and then you have some sort of re-ranker on top of that. And so um, it's much easier to, to, to do all of that using one data store rather than two or three. All right, and um, let's get back to, let's get back to uh, sort of stuff that's under the hood. So um, that was a little bit of a demo. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> uh, just to show you the, the code. So the, the Gradio app was generated by this um, a notebook. Uh, it's part of the repos. I'll, I'll have the link on later. And so essentially what it does is you 
uh, download the data from Hugging Face, and we've got a pre uh, pre-prepared data set in Lance where you, that you can download and create a uh, create a table and index on. And then when you open it, uh, you also create a uh, embedding function using the clip model from Hugging Face. And then each of the search apps basically just calls the uh, API for Lance DB, uh, which is you know dot search on like a text query or dot search on some uh, embedding and or just running you know here i'm just running uh, sql using duckdb but you can plug it lance data into like pandas or polars uh, and more right and then pretty simple radio interface here all right so um how are, how are we doing all of this i think what's different about lance db is that it is um backed by lance columnar format uh, Lands columnar format is an alternative to Parquet for AI data. So that means large blobs, that means uh, nested uh, data structures, uh, and oftentimes these are stored in like cloud storage rather than sort of on-prem in, in um, data centers. So what, how Lands differs from uh, Parquet and, and other columnar formats is it's one, it's good for fast scans and also point queries. Um, this is done through a better layout and an optimized I.O. plan. Um, we've also handcrafted lots of uh, SIMD code to make a lot of the uh, indexing, uh, especially in end uh, code faster. Um, in terms of features, Lance is, uh, is not just a file format like Parquet, but it's also a table format. So uh, we can support schema evolution and versioning essentially for free. I call it zero copy because if you, when you add columns or when you add rows, you don't have to create a snapshot and copy the data that was there. So for tabular data, this is annoying, but it's not a deal breaker. But if you have like a petabyte of images and you add a column, you're not gonna wanna create, have two data sets that are like, one is one peta, you know, a petabyte, one is one, one petabyte and like, uh, you know, like one gigabyte or something like that. Um, so it and it turns out that fast point queries uh, gives us the ability to do to add rich indexing, and so that's how we're able to build a vector database effectively on top of the storage layer. Uh, and of course, Land supports all of your uh, cloud storage. In terms of ecosystem integration, uh, Lance, uh, Lance's primary interface is Apache Arrow, right? So Lance is on disk, Apache Arrow is in memory, and then everything else plugs in on top. So Lance core is Rust based and we plug in a Python uh, wrapper on top of that, and you have Apache Arrow interface. So anything that is Apache Arrow compatible uh, can automatically work with Lance data. So uh, that includes Pandas, DuckDB, Polars, PyTorch, TensorFlow, uh, and also Spark and, and, and Ray. All right, and so today, uh, Lance format is, it's great for vector search, but it's also great for much more than that. So it's used in, uh, uh, autonomous vehicles companies for large-scale data mining. Uh, it's used in uh, data uh, tra for generative AI companies for training their data lake. Um, and it's also used in uh, e-commerce consumer applications for, uh, for a search, uh, vector search, and also for uh, key, uh, uh, keyword search and things like that, right? Um, and in the last, uh, I want to leave some room for questions. So uh, I'll probably go through a, a little bit quickly over these, but let's take a quick look under the hood of Lance format. So what are the big differences between how Lance format is designed versus, let's say, a Parquet? Um, so one, one thing here is if you look at uh, variable binary data, so these are like your strings, right, where each, each string is a different binary length. So uh, the sort of conceptual representation is you've got a bunch of data that's laid out and you've got offsets that indicate where does one string start and the next string, uh, one string ends and, and the next string starts. In Parquet, the offsets and data are interleaved, right? And that is why you can't have fast random query uh, because you, you have to read out the entire row group to know exactly where one string is. Now in, in lands, we've separated those two. So you've got a data array and an offset array. And so you can amortize the cost of reading the offsets 
And then that gives you the ability to uh, read just one particular observation. Now, for if, uh, if all you have are, are like short strings and short variable binary data, it uh, turns out this isn't such a terrible, uh, terrible problem. But if you have AI data, especially if you have images or, or large blobs like point clouds, this is a deal breaker if you're using Parquet. Um, the, uh, the vector search, as I mentioned, is use, implemented using uh, the uh, file format plus the indexing structure that is also, uh, on the, uh, also part of the data set, but is not part of the data file itself. All right, and so we use that for uh, in and indexing. And there's an arrow-based API. And what differs, uh, what makes LanceDB's vector index different is that we're NVMe-based or SSD-based. And so it's much cheaper and it's much more scalable. So you can find a lot more details on, uh, on our blog, uh, blog.lancedb.com. Um, <clears throat> I already talked about the, the versioning and schema evolution. Well, essentially what it allows you to do is append data, and if you find, hey, my retrieval quality is not uh, what I want, it's very easy to roll back to uh, previously, uh, your, your previous state uh, without having to uh, experience any downtime. Right? And so, um, all right, I think we're uh, almost at time, but so essentially what you want to remember is one, um, you don't want to just have any data infrastructure and slap together your, your tech stack, right? So the right tool is, would make it easier, not harder for developers. Uh, it should be scalable, uh, should be performant, and should be cost effective, and all at the same time. And um, the two things I've introduced, LanceDB is the uh, vector database. It runs in process, it's developer friendly, uh, it's very performant, and it also scales up very well in a very cost-effective manner. All of that is made possible by Lance Columnar format, uh, which is an alternative to Parquet for AI. So if you want to find out more details, the, uh, you can come to GitHub. So github.com slash LanceCB is our GitHub uh, org. Lance is the repo for the columnar format. LanceCB is the open source vector DB. And uh, all of the examples, including the one I showed today, is in vector DB dash recipes. Um, and we're going to be organizing a sprint this weekend, so I'm going to prepare a uh, bigger scale demo as well, and there's lots of fun things to hack on uh, for the Lance Columnar format. So, thank you. Okay, now we have time for questions. Any questions? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so there are some differences. So one is other vector databases um, store the indices all in memory, uh, whereas we are uh, di disk-based and uh, essentially we only we only hold the uh, the partitions that are being searched over in memory. Um, the algorithms might be a little bit different. So we've uh, so the ones that our, our users are using the most are uh, IVF uh, index or and we have disk ANN implemented, whereas most of the other vector databases, um, I think the most popular one is uh, HNSW amongst all of the, the other vector databases. Any more questions? Cool. I've got a question if I can yeah. ask. Sure. Uh, so you mentioned that the the LanceDB columnar format is mostly disk-based, is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's a disk-based format, yeah. Uh, so do you use some sort of technique for loading some part of it in RAM and caching it that way for faster access? Uh, yeah, so um, I think the, the I.O. plan is also actually different from like traditional OLAP engines um, so that it's more, it tries to take advantage of more parallelization and so the idea is that if your data is on cloud storage, cloud storage throughput is actually really good, but the latency is really sucks. 
So what you want your file access dependency graph to be, look like is very, very wide but shallow uh, so that you don't have too many serial dependencies between, uh, between like different uh, API requests, right? So those are all sort of uh, differences of how we try to make things a little bit more performant in Lance. Uh, the caching uh, will be, so a lot of the like metadata will be cached in memory um, the offsets arrays for various things will be uh, be cached in memory and can be amortized as well. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? We still have a little bit of time. Cool. Awesome. All right, All right. then we'll finish Thanks with that. Thanks very much.